Hello and welcome to episode 16 of Healing Vibrations. And this is the broadcast when I'm aiming to change the perspective of illness to see it as a gift. And this evening, I'm very excited to be joined by Georgia, Georgia, even Georgia Panachia Tapapulu. Thank you. And she is a spiritual healer, a lawyer, and I know her through her Toastmasters Club. So we have some very important, we think, messages to send out to, to the world. And I we we were having such great conversations. I had to invite her to, to share conversations with you guys to see if anything that we could say resonates or triggers or gets you thinking in a different way, because that's what these broadcasts are all about, to, to broaden your horizons and open your mind a little bit. So welcome, Georgia, and thanks for joining us. Thank you so much for the invitation, Dina, and what a close up great pleasure to be with you and I know your work so I like your work so much so I'm really honored and excited absolutely and thank you and I you shared with me some of your um some of your story and what led you to to becoming a spiritual healer so would you like to maybe share with our audience a, a shortened version of that and <laughs> uh, and yeah, what got you here well, uh, yes, because actually this is uh, discussing about life and uh, I didn't even know what a spiritual healer is. And to tell you the truth, uh, apart from my teacher, I don't really understand, you know, like a brand name. It's more like a, a path of life. It's more like a calling. So as everyone, uh, I had my issues in my uh, late 20s and I couldn't understand why things were not working. Also, I have been uh, kind of suffering from very different diagnosis of pains that like, nobody could explain, a lot of hormonal changes. So I've been in and out a lot of um, doctors from an early age, and I wasn't happy with all the medicine they were giving me. So instinctively, I felt this is not for me. I mean, I'm a healthy person. Yes, okay, my cycle wasn't really balanced, and I wanted to find out. and one thing will lead to another. So I start going to, a, let's say, a local center here for self-development, where I was introduced to the notion of God, because God was something I couldn't even pronounce. And then yoga, I did a lot of fasting and I did a lot of uh, groups. And that was just the beginning. So it took me a lot of years, around eight years, when I finally found myself in India as any respectful, you know, spiritual seeker will do once in their life. I spent two very troublesome months uh, suffering from the dust, uh, the food, but mostly from the lack of spirituality. Because India is an amazing place where there's a lot of industry and a lot of tourism. And it's not exactly what I was looking for. But of course, if you if you seek, if you ask for it, eventually you will find some answers. So just by chance, I've seen a couple of travelers that had that vibration that I felt the resonance with. Mm -hmm. And that vibration has to do with um, deep, internal, esoteric spirituality. I was there to find some answers because my soul wanted to have these answers. So I made a lot of notes about the ashrams I would like to visit next time I was going because the, the ones that have been, apart from a couple of cases, it's been just more of a, an exotic experience. When you say ashrams, what, 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 what's that? Ashrams, uh, okay, this comes from the Hindu tradition. It's like what we have in monasteries is people were living like, together like a monastery, right? Like people a church who, type thing. Uh, not that it shows because it, it, it uh, is a great complex is the one to have been with a lot of the call of devotees, the people who are coming from all over the world to, to live there, to live there, to pay the respects to the master, to receive healing. Most of them want to receive healing. Mm -hmm. And also a, a part of the, of the ashrams are run by the people who are doing the deep spiritual work. Right. I, but the ones that I've seen, and that was, uh, Actually, that was the moment I realized I didn't have to go to India for that. <laughs> I saw thousands of people coming from uh, really far away places just to be in the presence of the master. Now, my understanding of it is 
if you are doing the work, I mean, that 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 understanding came years later, but in the presence of the master, it doesn't matter if you're close or far away, as long as your heart is open and you're grounded in the moment and you, you ask permission to connect. But for those people, it was the material form and the material presence that gave them a sense of liberation, of forgiveness that they needed so much. And I think I'm not an expert, of course, in this, but uh, I, it's called um, Bhakti Yoga. It's, it's a form of yoga of devotion. That's what they believe is part of the way to to union with the divine. Uh, but I've, I've been as a traveler to places that most Europeans don't go. And I went to the really holy place of India. So I had a, let's say, my own perspective in this. And I came back and I said to myself, I didn't have to go to India if I wanted to see people, devotees, kneeling in front of the appearance of God, the, the, the form of God. There's a very two very famous sacred islands in Greece. I live in Athens, Greece. And uh, those are Tinos and Paros. Tinos is uh, the island of revelation with the Virgin Mary. We call her uh, Panagi in Greek was revealed and a lot of people come from all over the world and they get healed miracles healed and the other one that personally i had a very strong experience there is the cave of revelations at patmos where saint john wrote one of the um, holy books and uh, it's, uh, it's a cave again it invites you to be very esoteric to, to, to return back to yourself so I found these places in Greece. I didn't have to go to India, but it took me a lot of years to understand what I needed and I did not need it to follow. And what happens when I came back, I stopped everything because I didn't feel like this is what I wanted to do. And miraculously, of course, when you're ready, they say the, the big, the big um, spiritual tradition says when you're ready, the teacher appears. Mm -hmm. Now, my teacher, my root teacher, the reason I'm still alive and doing what I do is Ron Young. He is from New York. He came to Greece in November 2009. And uh, I never forget, I, by that time I had about 10 years of experience with meditation. But we sat with Ron. First of all, he was very funny. I have never met another spiritual practice where somebody is funny. You know, you could just, uh, he could be a stand-up comedian. I don't know. It's like, oh, so there isn't only all this pain and remorse and everything. It can be funny as well. So that's a great lesson here. First lesson here. And uh, the second thing is after his, he had a, he had a open call, a free presentation. And why I'm saying this is important to me because at that time I just bought my house and I had finally I had for the first time I had a huge mortgage on my shoulders and I felt like, okay, I have to be careful where I am investing my money now. And it was quite expensive to do his workshop with the, those days. So I said, okay, it's a free, if a free open event, I can just go. It was on a Thursday evening and then the, the, it was a weekend course. So you were going there just to see him. Friday was off and then Saturday day and Sunday they had a course. And I was kind of experienced by that time. I've done many things. I've been around, I've traveled, I've seen different teachers. And I go and I sit there. And this is for the for the people who are listening to us, you know, the most proven formula. You know, when you know, you know. So I'm sitting there and we have, at the end of a two hours presentation, we have a meditation. And I, I, I do the meditation. And for the first time in my life here, I feel like, oh, like this is the Red Sea of Moses and it's opening all the way up. And my, my heart was coming out like, what is this? I've never felt like this before in my life. And I felt something that I've never felt before or ever since. And the way I perceive this is what we call the calling. That was a calling. Right. So... After that, I remember I, I said to him, I mean, I had to be in that course. I mean, I, I couldn't I couldn't really help it. And in the most naive way after the course, he was amazing. He was amazing. I mean, I knew that he was something else. I've never met. I, probably I was looking for it all my life. And then I remember, as, as I, you know, 
a, a cute little naive person I went to, say, to tell him after the course, you are so good, you are so good, I really enjoyed it. And uh, of course, it's been now 12 years that I've been uh, following his uh, classes and his workshops all around the world. And until today is the most profound understanding of spirituality that I came across. And because I've been sitting with him in all the courses gradually, just for me, it was just for me to, to help myself with my issues. After all that wisdom and all that training, what happens, you start overflowing with energy of understanding. You see, you, you, your mind changes, your heart changes, and you see systems, and you understand the hidden symmetries of life, of love, of energies. But not like a, I'm not a medium or something. I'm just a human being. I'm very, like, I'm very logical. I've studied law, <laughs> you know, all that stuff. Um, but it's it's in the heart. We're working in our heart. And, of course, with a super intelligence. And I could just talk for another two hours, but I'm just going to wrap it here and just say this is how I started to become more serious in spiritual training, just for my own uh, needs. And gradually, because... What Ron does is always speaks to my heart in a way that I've never seen anybody speak like that to me, mm -hmm. to my life, to what it means to be human, to the true nature of love that nobody really teaches anymore. I find myself returning back and back and back, no matter how difficult or financially difficult has been, because um, it's a calling and it makes absolutely absolute sense to me and how how is that because i'm loving that you're finding a spiritual solution that originally came from you know symptoms effectively so how how are your sort of symptoms that you started off with now your physical symptoms hmm that's a very good question i i wouldn't say i'm right now in a in a state of balance because um i still haven't really understood understand myself to the point I I brought all this peace in my life in all of the different uh, realms of existence that I can now perceive. I'm very healthy and in a very unusual way. Now I've been, for those who don't know again, a, the country I'm coming, which is Greece, has been under very strict financial regulations for 10 years. Mm -hmm. And I've seen a lot of collapses around me for 10 years. The country collapsed, the structures, the civil structures, the community structures collapsed. And it was very, very difficult to even be here as a Greek because you are seeing your, your, your life turned upside down. And uh, there was, a let's say, a national depression. Now, not only I came through that, with a lot of perseverance and patience and confidence and believing in myself. I haven't developed any other health issues, right? I'm not um, any more um, sort of hypnotized by different medical, uh, how to say, um, examinations and, you know, the fear that a lot of doctors project that this is the, the end of your life and what you have is very strong. I did develop a polyps because, you know, I was feeling so healthy. I stopped doing my regular gynecological uh, examinations. Right. And it made absolute sense to me why I developed this, because I wanted to have a baby. And, you know, the uterus is always there to give birth. And what happened, and this is very interesting, this is an application of this of this understanding. Um, I still felt very healthy. I knew I had a seven centimeter polyps, but I still felt very healthy. So now I had to visit the gynecologist. I couldn't uh, avoid it anymore. So I went to a couple of them because I didn't have a doctor after, after all these years. And uh, again, they presented to me that, oh, maybe I have cancer. Maybe <laughs> this is malignant. They, they throw a load of fear at you again. A lot of fear. And I and again, what I was doing every single day, I was coming at home and I was just doing my meditation, just going back in my body and I say, okay, what is this going on? I don't feel that this is something so strong, but of course I don't want to be 
um, I don't, I'm not against medic, you know, classical medical me medicine, but I'm, it's, it's important to find the right people who are going to help you in your journey. And what surprises me because I've been so healthy is the commercial aspect of it. I felt I wasn't in front of doctors. I felt I was in front of businessmen. They were trying to get as much money of me. And it was evident because after all this training, you, what happens is you sit with somebody and immediately you sense the energy. You don't, you don't rationalize it. You don't really rationalize it. It's not what they it. say. It's how they vibrate, isn't it? The vibration is there and you just feel it in your spine. And it's like, okay, okay. And they told me some crazy story and we we're going to put you in the surgery room. And if we find more, we're going to tell you more. It's like, how can I know if I'm under anesthesia, whether you're going to find one or 10 polyps? I mean, you know, this yeah. is just scam. So that's one of the reasons. But even before that, I felt these people are not going to help me go back to health. They just want to have another operation. So what I did was very courageous. I said to myself, I'm going to give myself three months. I'm going to do all the meditations I know because I have a special training in, in the uterus massage. So I knew a little bit more of that. And I'm going to go and do the self-healing I know. And then if after three months I have the message that I have to go through operation, I'll do it. Yeah. At the same time, I was looking for another medical ad advice because I didn't feel these people were serving medicine. You wanted a second healing. opinion, basically. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, and that's where, that, that was what, uh, one of the, you know, uh, proofs to me that these things work. So what happens is just by, I, I call my teacher, I've, I've done anatomy and physiology. So I called my, my teacher and I said, could you please recommend somebody? Because I really, I'm not happy with the gynecologist I, I encounter. And then he referred to me to another general doctor, we call it in Greece. And I've just spoken on the phone with this lady. but. She was a true healer, a true medical hero. She is a doctor, an MD, but also she, she's very close to the ideal of, of helping people to get healed and not just um, refer them for money. And so then she, anyway, to, to, to cut a long story short, she introduced me to a great gynecologist. I went for, for, a, for a checkup and he took the polyps away, no surgery, in just two minutes, and he told me, Oh, Georgia, did they tell you you need a surgery for that? And he was surprised. And I knew that what they're telling me wasn't the truth. He did the biopsy. It was nothing to worry about. But for me, it was very important that I stayed close to my instinct with knowledge, with uh, research, with perseverance. And I, I only stopped when I found the people who I felt we both wanted me to be healthy and well, not because of money and not because yeah. there's like other hidden, you know, so, intentions. So I think if anything, if anybody, you know, if anyone's listening to this and thinking, you know, whatever you're being told is not sitting right with you, then, you know, don't be afraid to trust what if what's in your heart, and what's in your soul, because, you know, it doesn't matter whether how well-meaning the doctor is the doctor doesn't know you and doesn't sit in your body doesn't live in your body they haven't lived your experiences they haven't you know eaten what you've eaten they haven't you know all the things that you know we go through our life no with our 10 minute appointments at the doctors there's no way in the world it doesn't matter how fantastic they are they can know everything that's that's going on in your world so um and and for me as well, you know, the this 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 journey to wellness, I guess, is 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 proving to be a very spiritual calling. It, it for me as well, you know, it, it's led to meditation because on a very practical level, meditation can help calm your nervous system, calm your stress responses, which helps your body to heal. But then you get the the, the added bonus, I guess, of actually then connecting with yourself, with spirit, with the earth, with the, you know, the universe. It's, uh, it's a very beautiful thing, isn't it? And, you know, I just realized we have the same story with a different uh, way of uh, discovering the path. But 
like yourself, I, I didn't know what a spiritual healer is. Where I come from, my parents didn't know that. You don't go to university for that. You just start out because you really want to help yourself with something that you have uh, you are dealing in your life. But the more you, you immerse into what it is, you discover what else is within that. And of course, again, all spiritual traditions refer to the source that if we just follow any path, you know, they say all the roads, all the, the roads lead to Rome. In a way, you know, they say all the roads lead to God. And if God is not our preferred word of phrasing, this could be the divinity, the one source, the one that is greater than us, whatever you believe, it doesn't matter. All the, the zero, nothing it doesn't matter. But I think most of us, at least I do, with no guilt and no doubt anymore, I believe there is something that is bigger than others because through all these things that happen in life with my personal story, with my friend's story, with things like, for example, what takes place now in Europe with, um, you know, the, the energies of mm -hmm. yeah. military energies and all that, um, there's always something taking place. And although we are small, at the same time, we are equally big as those energies. And this is an understanding that for me takes a lot of years of sitting with these energies. And what you describe, meditation, we give permission, we give time and space to ourselves to just sit with that and allow again our innate super intelligence. We were born with this to meet us to recognize again who we are, because I don't know about you, but I get lost so many times during my day and I need to be reminded, oh, this is who I am. This is what I believe. These are my qualities, right? Yeah. So a meditation is this moment of absolute connection with ourselves. And I, it took me a lot of years to meditate because now, well, what I'm doing is, Meditation happens every single minute in the sense that now I'm keeping, I'm guarding, I am safeguarding and I am nurturing the connection every single minute. I'm losing it, but I'm getting back. Yeah, there. I, well, and I think that comes from because I've been meditating as a as, as a prioritorial practice, shall we mm -hmm. say, for about mm -hmm. sort of six, six years. And I've played with it a little bit before that. But interestingly, you know, found it a real challenge to find five minutes to sit in silence for myself. You know, I've got two young children at the time and life seemed really, well, life was busy, life is busy. But actually by taking, and I think you said there, give yourself the time and space to, to connect with inside of us. And the way the world is now with this constant screens all over the place and information overload and you know we barely get a moment of you know silence then it's it is enlightening when she's once you start recognizing that actually even just like you say it becomes more than of a this is how I am as opposed to this is somewhere that I've got to get to yeah, well, I think this is um, something that troubled me for a lot of years. And I guess a lot of people like me who like to do a lot of things and they're, they're restless and uh, they really want to explore life uh, knowledge. I, I like to learn a lot. So I was kind of pushing myself to do, to do the meditation and I wasn't working. So for eight years before I met Ron, nothing was working. Now, the difference with Ron Young's... Um, understanding of meditation and of course the lineage that where he comes from because this tradition is very old is that we just sit with whatever it is and we get to know it and the difference is we use all of our senses not just our mind but also our smelling touching our feeling and uh, getting to understand this new space what it is and of course, um, if you sit with something, at least this is my experience, 100%, eventually, if you, if you respect the rhythm that is behind it, you will, that, that, that situation, that thing, that whatever it is that you are asking to connect and see will reveal itself to you. Because it's part of you, it's part of life, it's part of 
the divine creation. Creation is not hiding away from us, but we are usually in our human arrogance and selfishness. We're kind of, um, you know, sometimes abusive. Like we want it now, like the, the phone, right? We want it now, right here. And then I'm not going to give you my attention because I have another million things to do. But I demand that you tell me what you are. It doesn't work that way. And how do we know that? You know, as a lawyer also, I'm always very careful observing the natural laws. And I have a very nice uh, tree outside my, my office. And it's in Athens, a big city. We don't have so many parks. But just with a small tree that every day some green parrots are coming on top of it. And I've just been watching during whole year how the tree changes and how the birds know when to come and when to leave. And this happens every single day. So those moments I realize, oh, I've got so much to learn. Just because I have a cell phone and internet connection and Google doesn't mean I, you know, I know yeah, what's going yeah. on. You, you can't learn by um, experiencing. I think that's it, isn't it? Rather than you, you can read something in a book or you can read it on a, you know, you can watch it on a YouTube clip or whatever, but it's not quite the same as seeing it, feeling it, noticing it, observing it yourself. And, and that's what we do with meditation, because when we are observing meditation, it's something intangible, mm -hmm. an experience, a feeling that you cannot actually give a shape to it. I'll say, oh, here it is, Gina, read it. That 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 is what it is. About. No, so it's like that's why the the degree of difficulty is is kind of different. But the degree of difficulty is that we haven't been taught from our families or mostly the society in whole, that first of all, this is allowed. Second of all, this is natural. Second of all, this is, third of all, this is vital for your life. Because, and I love one of my other teachers who said that everything in during the day is trying to get our attention and our time. And they get it because there's so many distractions, right? But if you, that's why I think for those who are, you know, want to break free and want to be rebels, and I, I have a lot of fire in me, so I can definitely resonate with that. I think what I what I call the most rebellious uh, rebellion, sorry, so my English rebellious sect in the world is actually to close your TV or your whatever yeah. to many yeah. social switch off. Uh, switch off completely, and also just to sit with yourself mm -hmm. and take that time and space. And that's probably the first movement to um, yourself and to the values you want consciously to have in your life. Yeah, and I think so. And I think, and I know from my own experience, you know, growing up, we always had some sort of, even, you know, we didn't have all the screens back, you know, when I was growing up, but we always had a radio on or we always had the TV on. There was always something making a noise. And it wasn't until I started learning about the power of silence. And, and it took a while for me to even, you know, to, to you know, potter around and, and do some things in the kitchen without the radio being on as background noise or having some music on or something like that. And, it, and but now it's I do find myself more sensitive to noise and preferring, definitely preferring a bit of silence. You know, I don't have the radio on occasionally have it on in the car but quite often I just switch it off so I'm driving and even just noticing the sounds that the car makes because of course it's not silent and even when you're sitting in silence it's never silent is it there's always once you start listening there's birds and there's traffic and there's people shouting in the distance and there's all sorts of things going on it's uh I don't think I've unless you're maybe sitting sitting in a cave somewhere it's uh it's not very often there's total silence <laughs> Actually, that's what happened with me. And sometimes I find this difficult to be on the buses and uh, the traffic of Athens because not only there's a lot of noise, but there's a lot of anarchy as well. Which, you know, I, and I now, nowadays what I'm doing is, you know, I'm aligning my energy <clears throat> and we are aligning by asking us ourselves and a conscious expression of ourselves to remember what the soul wants. And we're asking that our actions and our words and our thoughts and our presence is aligned with, in a, 
in a body, mind, spirit, soul. And of course, there are many meditations for that, but that's what we're actually asking because, you know, I'm in a point, I'm not saying I'm that year, but I just start speaking to myself. I realize the violence I'm producing against myself. And the violence comes from a very, very fundamental notion that I have allowed myself not to love myself. And I'm realizing practically, not just theoretically, because <laughs> it has to be in your body. Everything that actually works for you, you have to fill it in your body. That's what I know. The body never lies. We know that also from body work. The body, the muscles, they never, never lie. So mm -hmm. unless you, you find that energy in, in yourself, I would just uh, ask you to continue your investigation, your research, whether you have actually perceived what you think you have perceived. It's very important. Life is here. Life it happens in our body. We might think, we might feel, and that's lovely. But life on Earth is very much with matter. We, we are incarnated. We, we have a body. So I have no doubt that you know there are many many traditions that when we sleep we go to different realms of existence uh, a lot of them tell, tell us that uh, we get rejuvenated we get teachings from let's say mm -hmm. spiritual beings whatever you believe that that's okay i don't think there is any issue in in those realms of existence everybody's happy every nobody's there's no there's no uh an understand there's no uh, um there is no illness everybody's healthy without a body but we have a body and we get ill we get sick and we get depressed and we get annoyed and we lose our balance and we lose the sense of love for ourselves for others these are what my teacher calls earth diseases so i'm here and i want to have a good life and if earth diseases are part of the package so what's it i'll called? take it says Earth diseases, oh, like earth you know, the whole earth the whole diseases. range of it, earth yeah. like anything that bothers your you know peaceful yeah. you know Zen self is like uh, yeah. cold day is it, earth diseases, right? Earth diseases, wow, yeah. So then, how to and and I've been doing um, doing but I don't know if to do but but practicing a lot of the you know just reminding yourself that actually I want to come from a place of love. I want to I want to love myself and I want you know I want to because when you're loving yourself I think that's when the magic happens and we'd, we we we're not taught to love ourselves and it and it seems quite an alien concept until you start talking these languages and having conversations like this you know if it's like um if you've not been meditating, you've not been having these type of sort of spiritual conversations, then the thought of loving yourself does feel very alien, I think. I love how you, you phrase it, yes. Because, you know, until today, I, I would like to tell you just straight up the bat that I feel I'm living the life of my mother. <laughs> I feel I'm living the life of my father. Uh, of the choices I made 20 years ago, I know I still want to change them. So it's not like the it's not a bumpy road. Yes, that's true. But also, I just wanted to go back to what you said because energetically, I I, I would like to bring this to to your at attention and maybe to our the people who will be listening to us. I don't want to love myself because when we want something, I feel a pressure that I have to do another thing again with the hard work. Yes, another so, thing on my to-do list. And yes, and I am sorry, I've done all my to-do lists up to a point and I didn't get become better. I wasn't happier. I wasn't, uh, I didn't have peace of mind of actions. I still got a lot of weight that I put out of this violence against myself. It's okay. I'm, I'm, I'm seeing that and I haven't finished yet. I'm continuing my work and I'm continuing my trajectory to love. So what works for me what has that I've seen that works better than other anything else is just a magical phrase like I give permission myself to love myself. Mm -hmm. I allow myself to love myself. So, or I invite love again back to me. Whatever, mm -hmm. but you know, there's there's a sense of um, it's important that we make the choice and we invite that energy, but also we give permission ourselves 
the intention, the intention. I, I've heard so many times that I'm the ruler of the world and all this beautiful. And I remember that beautiful film that I really love, a Dead Poet Society with the uh, oh, reciting, yeah, yeah the, Dead the Poet Society, yeah, yeah, the English poet and and that um, mm. the cap, captain, my captain. Yes, I am the captain of the ship. But what does this mean exactly? So this is very theoretical and hasn't. I mean, all sometimes all of this new age shifting energies and stuff doesn't really work with me. That's why I like this grounding, um, you know, approach to this. But again, Ron Young, stay with it. And to stay with it, first of all, your feet has to be on the ground unless you're doing the lotus position. For those who are doing yoga, you have to stay grounded. You need to connect with the earth, with um, the flow that you are in. The intention is that I'm here and now, I'm inviting this, I'm open myself, I give permission to explore this. And what happens is we don't know exactly what we're doing, but if you keep yourself open to the possibility of receiving the information, the energy, the vibration, and the substance of it, then probably... Well, I would say I will guarantee, but that's my personal experience. So I just, again, leave it open to everybody. You're probably going to receive some answers. And the answer is not going to be just here or here. It's going to be all over. It's going to be in your body, in your mind, in your heart. And probably, I don't know this part theoretically, but I know it like experientially. I believe it comes from a soul level. Mm -hmm. Now, no, I don't talk with my soul every day. I, I I don't have an open phone call with her. I don't know. I don't send her email, but I just feel it because sometimes I wake up and I have a smile and I have a phrase, which then I make into a speech, as you know, in our uh, common practices as speakers, mm -hmm. or I make I have an invitation like I had from you. I didn't even know you were doing this, but then you heard me and the speech that inspired came from all this process. And then all of a sudden we have a common language mm -hmm. and we are building something because we are all connected. So this is how this dance goes. But it starts with an invitation, with a permission to myself to say, I don't know about this, but I really like to get to know this. This is my prayer mm -hmm. to creation, to God, to the divinity. And I say, ah, oh, I feel this is something missing in my life. I want to see more. Can I please go more? And I would like to see that, please, because this is important to me. Well, this is, I think, what you're describing, correct me if I'm wrong, but it's, it's about, you know, trusting our, our intuition, which we all have. We all have an inner connection, guidance. Um, but over the years, maybe, or over the, the lifetime that we've spent, we've got disconnected from it. And we've learned not to trust it. We've learned to listen to the doctors or listen to the parents or listen to the teachers, whoever else is in our world, society, politicians, whoever else is telling us what we should and shouldn't do. And to come back and to actually, you know, trust ourselves that we've got the right, we're doing the right thing for us is, you know, it's, it's challenging. It's challenging because sometimes it is going against what society says or, what our teachers say or what our parents say or whatever else it is and uh, and that and, and I think you talked about it earlier you talked about you know being it was a courageous decision when you you know you said to your doctors no <laughs> and and you know I, I was gonna uh, return back to the and thank you for for spotting this yes because the worst part wasn't the doctors it was my mother because my mother all of a sudden she was afraid of her doctors is gonna have cancer and not only I had to calm myself, that's why I needed to do every single day meditation, because otherwise I couldn't align myself. I couldn't hold my own personal fears. Mm. I'm human. I'm always human. And then I also had to ease her pain, her threat of my future as a mother. And because I'm a daughter, I'm not a mother. I also, as a healer, I was also asking permission to understand her point of view being a mother. So that was a kind of a complicated exercise that I asked myself only because I'm, you know, I'm also a healer. But the, my main task was only one. I needed, I, I made the choice. I gave permission myself, 
no matter how busy I was, every evening I was doing uh, 30 minutes plus whatever I wanted meditation with my uterus to understand what's going on and what is needed here and what is my choice here. And actually with the people who are suffering, they have a very strong calling to, to explore this method of meditation because they have a very strong incentive and uh, my experience as well as the people who are suffering um, difficult stages of terminal diseases, let's put it that way, neurological or cancer, things like that, they tend to be very disciplined because they know that they, they need to help themselves. So again, there is an instinctive uh, movement to those techniques because obviously they speak to people, they're here to serve people. And again, not everything's for everybody. I, I believe that. I mean, I've, that's what there's so many things that were created for everybody to find solace, healing. Mm -hmm. But for some people, this is could be a number one priority because, uh, like yourself, I enjoy this silence. I need this silence, and I I need to listen to me. I forgot who who would I believe sometimes. There's so much happening on that I need to hear myself, myself in my silence, not just all the other penis of the world. Yeah, and I think for me, when I talk about, you know, illness being a gift, I think that's the gift. That's the gift. And you you, you sort of, you, you said earlier that when people are suffering, it's a, you know, it's an opportunity because your body is talking to you. And if it's in a lot of pain, and if you, you know, your symptoms are causing you a lot of anguish shall we say then you know it is an opportunity for you to stop and listen and start talking and, and again if you've never done anything like speaking to your body it sounds pretty crazy and way out there but actually it just starts with a simple willingness to stop and say you know I'm willing to listen and like you say just wait and, and just I'm open to to hearing whatever you've got to say and just accept it doesn't always want to speak in that moment and like you said the way that you it's not going to sit there and say well actually then this is what you should do and this it, <laughs> you know this is this is the this is how you know and that's certainly my experience now is is learning to 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 listen to the nuances of my body and mm -hmm. and what it's trying to say and recognize the you know the, the the answers when they come and 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 you know like you said we're human and we get frustrated when the answers don't come in straight away and we haven't sussed it yeah. all out and you know our time scales that we've put on ourselves aren't working so I think the time scales for me when we talk about smart goals I do quite like a smart goal but the time bit out of it has gone out the window and just recognize that actually, if we want to achieve what we want to achieve, um, and we want to be how we want to be, we've got to let go of, of how long it's going to take. Yeah, and I just, again, I want to give you my, my personal experience with that. Uh, in the work we're doing is very deep. One of the things we do is spiritual constellations. And the healings we do are profound. I've been in the presence of healings of people that by medical terms, they wouldn't be alive now. Wow. I've seen that so many times, it's still hard to even, you know, say it publicly and not uh, be perceived as somebody who just believes in miracles and stuff. So I just believe what I saw, of course. But again, although I believe it, it's just to, it's, one thing is to notice that this can happen. And another thing is to allow yourself to be the recipient of such great, enormous gifts of life. And uh, I love, I haven't really felt it energetically yet in me because it's a very, very big lesson, but I believe it's probably one of the most important in life. The the, the root teacher of my teacher who is Hilda Charlton, and she was actually from Britain. She lived in New York and I haven't met her, but I met her in every single year of training with Ron Young. This woman is amazing. What was her name, sorry? Read, uh, sorry, it's, it's um, Hilda Charlton. Hilda Charlton. I have Hilda the book Charlton. Yeah. yeah, let me show you the book. So 
that's kind of see a face. Yeah. Oh yeah. Saints lit. Saints alive. Yeah. This is a uh, Hilda. Okay. Here's the name of it. Oh yeah. This is a. Uh, this is an amazing woman that again I haven't physically met, but in every sense she's in me, and I'm grateful that I met her in my life. She said that. Um, Actually, you know, it's crazy because all of our films and literature and works of art and everybody's uh, concern every day is love. But she said that the hardest frequency to tolerate for people is love. So what do we do? We're pushing love as a vibration away because and that's what my experience with. Yeah, like with Ron, he is the one who showed me, who showed me not just talked about it. I saw that that this love that nobody speaks about and this love is not a love between just two people or romantic love or a, a love of uh, parents to children or a love for a piece of art it's, 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 it's a state of being mm -hmm. and again i'm just a novice i'm practicing this but mm -hmm. real love has no discrimination has this amazing compassion to receive everything equally with no judgment. And I'm, you know, very small compared to this, but at least I have an idea that I shouldn't just, you know, be fixated with romantic love or the love for achievement, the goals and all that, because actually this is, again, an energy that puts a yeah. barrier with myself. Is it, well, like it's, you, all, it's almost, again, it's, it, it's coming from a place of lack, I suppose, isn't it? Because it's like, I want this, I want this, I want this, I want more, I want more. Uh, for me, and that's just, again, my personal uh, way of helping myself to understand, it's more like a patriarchy understanding of life. Mm -hmm. The idea that everything is built on taking and uh, the masculine, that like the, the masculine energy that doesn't balance, that's not balanced with the feminine energy. It, it, for me, it's more like that. I've seen this, um, and I've seen that with people I've been working as my mentees as well. Like, for example, people are joining a group. It could be a group for dancing. It could be a group for um, speaking like we have. Or it could be a group for um, going trekking, whatever. And there's always some people who are in the core part of the group and they're the organizers and they put a lot of work you know and we tend to use we tend as humans we have this yeah i guess it's luck need to go somewhere and take 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 oh we, we want to be like the, the brats that you, uh, you want her mommy to, to always hug us and i don't know what this happened i read beautiful beautiful works from different psychologists i've done an amazing work called living in truth with core energetics, which is a combination between psychology and spirituality. This is the came close this world in, in my heart, in my understanding. It seems that this is probably the pattern of becoming humans. I don't know. But what I know is I've seen it in every single person. There was a moment when we still need to take. It's like we always like enough something. What helps me is I have I have now the understanding that this is part of my life. This is part of who I am. Again, when this happens, the process for me is, okay, just sit with that and see, oh, how does this feel? How does this look like? What is the energy in this? What is the substance? What is the vibration? So I don't put a judgment. Oh, again, uh, I, I don't go to psychological analysis. Oh, this is because my mother didn't give me this gift. And now I feel the need to have this gift. No, I'm just saying, okay, so I'm leaving this behind because I've seen in my training and in my practice, that this is one level of understanding. And now we're doing a spiritual work. What happens, the more the more you work, and of course this is limitless, because life is limitless, it's infinite, never stops. But whatever it happens, I've seen that the grace of spirits allows me to understand different systems holistically. And I don't even use this word very often because it's kind of burned word. But the idea is you see the whole picture. Mm -hmm. You see a bigger picture. You see every time a bigger picture. But the more you see sometimes, you know, it could be a double-sided sword. That's why it takes time. You have to build your foundation so you can receive that knowledge without being overwhelmed. 
that's why we respect the process of everybody. And when we don't get answers, just going back to what you said, when you don't get answers in the goals you have set and the time from and the time scale you want, maybe there is another reason for that is to protect your nervous system for overworking and over exhausting your own system. And in my experience, when I leave that and I go to nature and have a beautiful, beautiful break and I wait, then at a certain moment, I have the answer. And again, I want to say that earlier that, for example, what we do with this kind of healings, the movement goes out for years, sometimes two years. So it happened to me, and this is my personal story. I asked something my teacher in June 2000. And ten in the first uh, professional training he did that I I was I was with him, and I got the answer in New York in 2022 January. <laughs> so it took about ten years, yeah. right? All right, but uh, yeah, 2010 to th- 2020. I'm sorry. So it took about ten years. But you know what happened? And this is extraordinary because I couldn't believe it. I, you know, all these years, there's so much agony to understand this. I had this question, like, I don't understand. I don't understand. And then when I received the answer, which is just, just like that one single moment, then all of a sudden I felt very fresh, very young. And all the years that passed seemed like a moment. It's like, yeah, yeah okay, that was nothing. Now I understand. So I think it, because they talk about, um, surrendering don't they you know it's just and 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 surrender is a bit of a it's again a double-edged sword word isn't it what does surrender actually mean but I think from from what you've just been saying surrendering is that real acceptance that you know the aren't if you've asked a question the answer will arrive when you're ready to receive it I uh, well, in theory, yes. Again, I would say that that when we ask, we will receive. I believe that. I believe that. But when we will receive, it's something that is not determined by our own willingness. And that's mm-hmm. why sometimes all these beautiful, you know, workshops like it's a matter of will and you have to do it. And the affirmations for me, this didn't work. I did them for eight years before I met Ron and it didn't work. And then I sat with him and I sat with him for years and all he told me is like, look into this. That's that's the basic of principles what we do. And suddenly I found this closer to me. It gave me it gave me a better sense of myself and and more peaceful energy. And gradually I developed. I mean, I didn't have any special abilities before, but now I go somewhere, and a lot of times without even questioning it I got so much information like for example when I sit with people and I get this feedback a lot I see so many things that uh, for their life for their business that they ask me for them personally and if you ask me where this come from I don't invite Mm -hmm. it it's in me because now after all these years the connection like I told you is every single day every single minute is a meditation but meditation is actually the way I keep the connection And of course, you know, because I still, um, I still deny myself every single day and every single moment. And that's okay, as long as it happens, because there's nothing else I haven't tried. So, you know, that's it. I'm saying this is where I am. And I lose my faith. I mean, I'm not one of those people that have this, my faith is based on, on, um, on this conversation with the divinity right uh, i have been fighting god all of my life and that is the pain of my existence this is who i am my issues were every time i was just you know searching and it was of god you know why life has to be like that i ask this kind of questions and if you ask this kind of questions you can spend the rest of your life asking these questions well, this, no is it, this is it so the answers are all important but but George, we, we've we've come to the end nearly of an of an hour already. Oh, <laughs> I can't believe it! And uh, and and I was wondering if maybe we could we could just end with because um, with maybe a, a practice or a suggestion of how people if they haven't got a meditation practice they can start, or if they've got a meditation practice and they want to try a different way, 
C can you talk us through um, something that yes, can just we, get people started? We can do a basic five, meditation. So. Yeah, mm -hmm. we can do a basic meditation for grounding ourselves and connecting. Which uh, uh, we can do it for ten minutes. Would you like to do it for ten minutes or longer? Uh, no, we, we've only got about seven minutes. So can we shrink oh, that's it down even, a little bit? Yes, I was just wondering how, why you know um, illness is a gift for you. But I would like to ask you this and maybe give this to your audience another time. But I will gladly do the grounding meditation with you tonight and uh, we'll see how that goes. Yeah, well, yeah, absolutely. And we'll definitely talk again because I think uh, you've got a lot of wisdom to share. And yeah, it's been a fascinating conversation. I've made some notes scribbled down here and uh, and I hope everybody's found it useful. And if anybody wants to connect with you, Georgia, can they do that? Yes, they can. I actually building a site at the moment, but they can always connect with me. Uh, you can write at connect at fuzzyredboots.com. That's oh, the blog. Fuzzy red right. yeah. Fuzzyredboots.com is the a blog I'm I'm putting into articles, this kind of inquiries, investigation, and just as the ones you experienced. But but maybe sometimes people would just want to discuss about what they need to see, and I think can be of service to that. Cool. I will put and the just, links in. Yeah, yes, in no problem. So, yeah, so, okay, well. Right, so I will just uh, do a five to seven minute meditation. Now, okay, basically, okay. this is going to be an exercise that I suggest people do just to ground themselves and then after the meditation stay for as long as they can at the beginning we start with only five minutes and gradually we open the field for as long as it's comfortable for us and then we'll see and after sometimes we talk again we go even deeper okay brilliant thank you all right so i invite everybody to bring your attention to your breath and start taking a very beautiful and slow breath. Breathing naturally. If you are sitting in a chair, make sure that your foot are on both of them are on the floor. If you're sitting in a lotus position, make yourself comfortable and ground yourself. Your hands are resting on your thighs. And allow a very gentle smile on your beautiful, beautiful face. This is the moment you give permission for yourself to be with yourself. You're giving permission to have the space and time to meet you. And please now bring your attention to your heart, the center of your heart. It is on the center of your sternum. And imagine you have a big, big nose there and start breathing from that nose at the center of your sternum. And as you breathe, allow yourself to feel your beautiful, beautiful heart. And let your smile grow as you are connecting with your heart again. And now I'd like you to take your energy, your consciousness, your awareness all the way to your pelvis and then to your knees and your legs. And please here imagine that you're wearing two beautiful, beautiful red boots. And the red boots are three meters wide and they have a beautiful, vibrant red color. 
feel those boots in into your legs and now feel the boots expanding all the way to the earth as they expand they have, they're creating these beautiful beautiful roots and the roots and the boots are going all the way to the center of the earth and then slowly they're going even deeper to all the different layers and the roots are expanding and you find yourself and your energy traveling all the way to the center of the earth and until you find yourself at the core of the earth you've made it here and here there is absolutely peace absolute peace absolute acceptance you might see here the big mother she's waiting for you she's here for you always for you she's welcoming you here you give permission yourself to leave whatever you don't want to carry she's saying yes and she's receiving you fully present fully aware Take your time and stay with her. You can stay here as long as you want and when you feel ready, please start bringing a red beautiful energy all the way up to all the different layers all the different roots till you find yourself back to your feet to your boots and let that beautiful radiant red energy come all the way to your pelvis and then all the way to your abdomen to your heart and let that energy expand into your heart and another part of this energy let it go through your throat back of your head all the way to the top of the head and it goes straight into the sky into the heaven into the universe and there it's creating beautiful red roots and now bring your attention to all the beautiful sky heaven the above and imagine beautiful violet or gold roots and feel the energy of the roots feel the pulse of the universe feel the vibration of that unlimited space and then bring that energy that awareness and that color slowly into yourself on the top of your head then go straight into the back of your head, your throat, all the way to your heart. And in the heart, allow this to blend with all the other energies and full, fill your beautiful heart. And part of the energy continues all the way down to your pelvis to your legs, to your foot, and all the way to the roots you have in earth till it reaches the core of the earth. And now you have connected both with heaven and earth, with father and mother. And slowly bring your energy back into your heart where everything is meeting everything. Everything is you and everything is in you. And here you can stay as long as you want. And when you're ready, you can come back.
when you come back, bring yourself the energy you just met. Bring together the vibration, the substance, the beauty of your way in heaven and in earth with father and mother, with everything, with the one. Breathe in, breathe out. As you slowly breathe in, start bringing your awareness slowly back to your senses. And give permission for yourself to open your eyes and to walk into life with a beautiful connection of everything inside of you. Hmm. Thank you, my lovely. That was... Uh... Thank you. Yeah, that was beautiful. And I, I, I'm still smiling with the, the thought of having a nose in my sternum. But I like that idea of actually just the idea of breathing through your heart is something. But I've never thought of putting a nose down there. So I like that. <laughs> I just had to make it more quick. But yeah. uh, basically, it's a very basic exercise of connecting both poles up and down. So we are grounded, but also connected. And what I suggest for everybody who would like to explore this, stay as long as you want, both up or down in the core of the earth, and stay in your heart. And that's how you expand the time of your meditation. I hope this has been helpful for this time. We're looking forward for another session. With yeah, you. definitely. We'll, we'll make sure we give us more time next time to get into a deep, maybe a deeper meditation and to, to show what that feels like. But thank you so much, Georgia, for, for sharing with us all the you know, from fears to love to uh, your spiritual healing path and all the other amazing things that you shared with us today. So thank you so much. And we'll, yeah, I would definitely like you want to have you come back as a guest again another time and we can talk further because we didn't even touch the subject that we were going to talk about. Didn't we? Nope. <laughs> That's true. That's <laughs> a whole true. other one. So we'll save that. Thank you.